opened our eyes that we can be able to see now. That we can now dwell into your love. Bring us our broken pieces together. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We worship you even this afternoon. We worship you, King of glory. Thank you, Lord, for that amazing grace that has made us now to see you. lost, but now I can see. Oh Lord, thank you. So bright, dragged in the deep Malikli and you brought my feet on the look to stay. That amazing love, the amazing grace. Lord, we enjoy the sweetness of its sound. That saved us. So today we just say, lift our hands and say, thank you brain but now we are able to see thank you Lord thank you that we can be able to see you now thank you that you brought us back into the love you've gathered our broken pieces and brought them back together in love thank you for what you did for us on the cross Thank you for your wonderful blood that washes us clean. Thank you, King of glory, that when we call upon your name, Lord, you hear us. Thank you when we were so far away, you brought us back together and called us sons, King of glory. Right now, today, we can still understand and say, Behold, what a man of love that the Father has bestowed on us, calling us sons, who were once far away, who were orphans, so we celebrate that amazing grace. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just lift up your hands and worship the Lord. With, raise your hands and worship Him. Lift your voice and bless His name. We were so far away, but He brought us here. Our gathered us together. King of glory. We give you praise. We give you praise tonight, Lord. We choose to lift your name on high. We thank you for now we can see. We thank you that you brought us together again to be God's sons in the house of the Lord. Lord, 
we say that thank you for the amazing grace. Thank you for the love. Thank you for choosing upon us. Thank you, King of glory, for not leaving us. Thank you that even as when we walk out of your presence, still your hands are outstretched, calling us by your grace to bring us back. So we bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Now give a mighty hand bless to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Today we are so cold, I don't know why. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you were on the run? Because I would say that people maybe they are tired or what. I mean, uh, okay, just move around and greet your neighbor. Say hello to your neighbor. Hello, hello. Say hello to your neighbor. Show him some love. Tell him that I love you with the love of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for this is the day that he has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm so glad to be here. My name is in Zion Charleston in Subuga. My wife from Florence in Subuga. And we are the I'm a Salongo. She's a Nalongo. Amen. Hey, that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, if you need anointing, I will just lay your hands on you and you go and you get the twins. Your name, hallelujah. And you become a twinner. I mean, uh, so I'm excited to be in the presence of God. How many of you are happy to be in the presence of God? Hallelujah. Feel free. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, he, there is? There is freedom. Amen. So we are happy today that... Uh, uh, we are once again before the presence of the Lord. Uh, this is my last Sunday, probably here. Next Sunday, we shall be uh, launching C3 Divine Buambo. Amen. <laughs> um, we have been already prayed for, anointed for that great work. Amen. Um, and we are not afraid because we know the Lord is with us. Amen. Uh, and the Lord will go before us. And his presence is allowed about us. Amen. So we believe, we believe, we believe the Lord to do a great work from that side. Amen. From Kampala to that side. Amen. So we are still a family. Amen. We are still together as a family. I'm not gone forever. This is our home. Amen. So we believe in spiritual fathering. Pastor Chilabila is our spiritual father. So this is the base where we are basing from to go to Buwambo. So we are happy. God is doing as well. I'm so happy that uh, uh, we, are, we were able to get a place where we are going to, to plant the church. But we haven't bought it. We are renting it. It has been a hassle for us to find that place. And I believe uh, we are still lacking a lot of things. Amen. So kindly, can you be a blessing to this ministry? We still need a lot of things. Amen. Uh, but we thank the Lord for the blessings that we have been blessed. Uh, this, uh, we've been sold into the church, C3 church, as a church has sold into us a lot of money and some other members. So we may the good Lord bless you so, so much. So we believe on Ma Tuesday is the day when the entire team will be there on the ground. Uh, we, by the end of the day, if we're not disturbed by rain, we believe the structure, a Wedde. But we, without iron sheets, uh, we believe to you to be of Funa Mabati, Molina Yesu. Amen. Then, the skeleton, the skeleton will be done on that day. Amen. So, God is good. Amen. Uh, we are in the last days. We are in the last days. And I came to remind us that we are in the last day. So, since we are in the last days, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to walk? How are we supposed to walk as a church? It's my purpose why I'm here. Amen. God gave me this word three weeks ago when I was told that I'll be ministering today. Now, until God told me, when I asked him, what should I, what do you want me to share with your people? He told me, go and remind them to prepare themselves for the last days. I mean, uh, for I'm about to come to rapture the church, but now people, the church is not ready. 
Amen. And so I have come to remind us. There is a verse that we love most. It's in second, 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 second Peter, chapter 1, verses 12. It says that I won't be negligent to remind you, dear brethren. Amen. Huh? To remind you of these things, though you know them, that you may be established in the present truth. Amen. God always has a present truth. So, Agameti, Sija Kure Kwesulira Yogwa Nagamba, Neme Badju Kizabi Intubi Nwa Demo Bimanyi, Nemo Sobolo Kunyuez Mazima Agarero. God wants to establish us in the present truth. Now, the present truth for today is that He is coming to take the church any time from now. And how is He going to come to take the church? By rapturing it. Probably you could have never heard about the word rapture. Amen? The word rapture. But we are going to talk about it uh, in a few minutes. I'm going to, disc, uh, to, uh, to explain the meaning of this word. Amen? So we are in the last days. And when you go on the international news, or when you go on YouTube, and you purpose to look at what's happening in the world, amen, uh, all the things that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24 are happening today. They have intensified. Amen? They have intensified. Jesus made some statements in Matthew 24 that there will be wars and rumors of wars. What haven't we heard? We hear Russia invading Ukraine. We have heard of China and, uh, and Taiwan. So, and so many, so many, I mean, wars and rumors of war. We, it talks about floods. Almost the entire world everywhere. Flood, the, the place, the entire world is flooding. I mean, uh, so many countries are in floods. You hear about hunger, famine, famine. We've had been seeing people in Kalamoja dying of famine. Amen? We've had so much, so many things that you talked about, they have intensified. Now, this is the beginning of the end. We are in the latter days. Amen? Uh, come on, someone who is on the uh, projector. Project me this verse, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is with uh, like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Amen? T. Orunakurumu masoga mokama, loringe miyaka rukumi, ne miyaka rukumi, jiringo runakurumu. Now, Peter was writing, when you read this portion of scripture from, ma, ma, from first, this second Peter chapter 3, coming down, he's talking about the day of the Lord. It's narrating about the day of the Lord. Now, when we talk about the day of the Lord, we are not talking about a 24 hours day. We are talking about the, the entire season of the last days. Now, Peter is giving us a mystery. He's giving us a mystery here. I've been telling the people in the morning that in, the, in, in, in theology, we have a, a, teach, a teaching called, a teaching called neomelology. Neomelology from neomelos. Neomelology is the study of numbers in the Bible. And normally these numbers stand for something. They represent something. I mean, huh? these numbers represent something. Number from number one to seven. We see God creating the world from day one, from the first day up to the seventh day. On the seventh day, what did God do? He rested. So the entire creation was from the first day up to the sixth day. Amen? Sixth day. And on the seventh day, God had completed. So we've been looking at uh, number seven as a number of completion. Seven is a number of completion. Before God in heavens, seven is na the number of completion. It's where God is, uh, comes into completing. Amen? Into completing whatever he's doing. We see the seven lampstands. We see the, the seven angels to the, the seven churches. The seven, seven, seven. This number seven is a number of completion. But now, what's the mystery that Peter's telling us in this verse? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Peter is giving us a mystery here that we need to figure out by the Spirit. Now, uh, uh, from the first day of creation in Genesis, from Adam to Abraham, we count 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, we count 2,000 years. Those are how many years? Wanji, are you there? Are you following? Those are 4,000 years. 
Now from Jesus to year 2000, those are 6,000 years. Now the 6,000 years were complete. Now those were six days. They were totally complete. Now we, are, we have already entered into the seventh day. And we said the seven, number seven is a day of completion. Amen. We are entering into the seventh day where this world is coming to its completion. Where this world is coming to its end. Amen. So we see a lot of things. Because we are coming to the end, uh, that's, this is the reason as to why you realize that uh, a lot of prophecies about the end are happening today. And they have intensified today. Glory to God. So we need not to be ignorant. We have finished the sixth day. We have entered the seventh day. The day of completion. So God, is t God, God gave me this word to come to remind the church that we are in the last days. In the last minutes of this world. Amen. He's coming back to rapture the church. He's coming back to take the church. But my question is, are you prepared? Amen. Are you prepared? If the rapture happened now, are you ready for the rapture? Because there is something called the rapture. Rapture, we find this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 5. Uh, chapter 4, verse 16. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. Kindly give me that one. 16 to 17. I'm going to read these few scriptures and I break down some stuff here. Now rapture, the term rapture is derived from a Latin word called raptus. Which means to be caught away. Caught away. Or caught up. In the Latin, the word is equivalent to the Greek word, to the Greek called halpazo. H -A -R -A. P-A-Z-O, halpazo, the meaning the same thing, translated as to be caught up. For the, eh, First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Now Paul is telling the church something here. For the Lord himself will descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise fast. Now there is a day called the rapture. When is it happening? In this seventh day, anything can happen. I mean, uh, anytime we can be raptured. The Lord is coming back. He will not reach the earth down here on the ground, but he will remain in the clouds with an archangel. I don't know which archangel, either Michael or but he will blow a trumpet, and at the twinkling of an eye, graves of the righteous ones of the Lord, those who died in Christ, will open up, transfigure, they, will be, they will receive their bodies and a transfigured body, and to be caught up quickly with the Lord in the skies. And at that particular moment, then, verse 17, after they go, what happens? Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. But not every one of us. This is what I, why I, what I came to emphasize. This might, not, this might not be each one of us. You may find yourself staying, some staying, some remaining. You need to ask yourself, will I be among those ones we are talked about in 417? Will I be among them? If the rapture is now, we, can you be able to be caught up with the Lord? Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the crowds to meet the Lord in, air, in the air. And thus shall we live, shall we always be with the Lord? Amen. Now my question is, if the rapture is today, are you ready? for it as just as you sit there if the graves broken open amen and we see the dead raising up getting to be caught up with the lord in the skies at that particular moment will you be able in your state now amen so the lord is uh, has given me this word to come and uh, speak to us to warn us Hallelujah. 
mukama atulabula azo tulabula to walk when we are sober amen when we are sober i'm going to talk about uh, it will be so bad for you to remain not to be raptured when you miss the rapture it it will be hard for you to receive salvation because at the, when the, the rapture happens and people are caught up the world will never remain the same again i mean uh, this much you need to know the world will never remain the same from that very moment of time there will be total chaos amen now i want to share with you four things that will happen to those people who will remain after if we are raptured now four things give me kindly give me revelation chapter 6 verse 4 6 4 the first thing number 1 is peace will be taken away from the earth peace will be taken away from the earth man you wouldn't love to stay when we don't have peace on the earth the bible says another horse no, we have already begun. Uh, uh, we are already. We have already begun the tribulation. Amen. Just a minute. <laughs> Let me go back, Katono. First, give me, brother, uh, Revelation chapter three. I want to explain something because I want to. I want to break down to bring it to a point where we come to this. Tutuka tutienu, Revelation chapter 3, verses 17. Now, there is, when you read from verse 4, uh, okay, give me verse 14. I go peluzu through quickly. Verse 14. Verse 14. Now, the Bible here, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, this thing says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of all creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish, give me a new King, uh, new King James, uh, this is New King James, I could wish you were cold or hot. Continue. So then, because you are a lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I have, I have become wealthy, I have no need of anything, and do not know, but you do not, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Continue. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and, rare and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may be revealed, may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salves that you may see. Continue. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. I love that one. Be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand on the door and knock. If anyone, have ears, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. And I will also overcome, and I also overcame and sat down with my fathers on his throne. Amen. And the last verse says, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Now, the verses that I've just read from the 14 to 22, these are the characteristics of this church. Amen. Which church? The, these were seven churches, and each church is, and each church represented a certain dispensation according to its time. Now we are in the dispensation of the Laodicean church, and God is giving us the characteristics of this church. Amen. Verse 17, Gambia, because you say, I am rich. Amen. The truth is, the church of this, this the church of today, we've gotten a lot of stuff. And now we are finding it so hard to stay. It's not so easy when you are rich to stay with these things and you then stay in the road. I mean, uh, it, the things, the material possessions are deviating us from the course of the Lord. 
Amen? So you say you are rich, increased with goods, and in need of nothing, but you don't know that you are rich, miserable, poor, and blind. Amen? As I love, I rebuke and chasten, but be zealous and repent. So the Lord is calling us into repentance. Behold, I stand on the door and knock. If anyone you have an ear, let him open, and I will come in and will dine with, up with him, and he with me. Amen? So these are the characteristics of the, the, the Odessian church. The Odessian church is the church, dispensation of this church, where it's neither cold nor hot. I've been telling, telling the people in the morning that today we, this is a, a generation where I find a person, he is so much in the Lord for one week, another week is out. He's served in the morning, in the evening, he's several, very, very, very holy than God, than thou, as he's coming to church. But when you get out of the church, amen, you are another different person. So, the end is here. God is coming to take a church to himself which has no wrinkle, neither a spot. Amen. So, now, if you had to remain behind after the rapture, the Bible has said that peace will be taken away from the earth. And my dear, you won't be able. Give me that verse, uh, Brother Benja. Uh, Revelation chapter 6 verse 4. Remember, I'm talking about the things that will happen to people who will stay at the rapture. Abu Uganda, you wouldn't love to stay. The world is going to be a very hard place for you to stay into. Now the Bible says, another horse. Now after that chapter 3, we come to chapter 4. Now the events that are happening from chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4 from verse 1, they are happening after the church is being raptured. Now from the, chap the fourth chapter after the rapture onwards, these events are happening to the people who would have remained after we are raptured. Then we see in chapter 6, verse 4, where the Bible says, another angel, another horse, fear a red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And the people should kill one another, and there was no given unto him, a, and there was given unto him a great sword. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you look so scared, but... Um, let you be scared. Whichever you could say, like a catch you could say, we call him more morim. Amen. We call him more morim. The Bible says that peace will be taken away from the earth immediately after the rapture. When peace will be taken away from the earth, there will be some great, great killings. Why the killing? Because this is what is going to happen. Uh, the world will never be the same again when we go. People will begin to rob stealing from each other because the the world would have, would have become lawless they will never be law again the police is not working the army is not working and everyone is doing as he wishes in his eyes amen so people will begin killing each other people will begin to do a lot of crazy things but now why are they killing each other they will be stealing there will be murder there will be fornication and adultery of highest order. Amen? I've been telling people in the morning that people will, men will rape women like nothing. People will begin stealing. Banks will be broken down. People will enter banks and begin to steal. Sh supermarkets, shopping malls. Amen. Amen. Uh, and they kept breaking up things and they are stealing these things. Chaos, total chaos. There will be great accidents in the way. Because if a man, a man of God, is, a person is holy with God as he's driving, I mean, as he's driving, he will be raptured and the car will just hit another. It will just go off the road. Aeroplanes will begin coming from the air, falling down. It will go, it's going to be a, a terrible holler, a real holler. I mean, uh, now imagine, aeroplanes are coming, falling Fast trains, these fast tube trains, cars, great fatal accidents on, along the way. Now people will begin calling each other, 
hello, you're trying to reach out to your parents, to your, to, to, your, to your beloved ones, but the phones are not going through. There will be a great phone jamming at that particular moment. You cannot communicate to anyone. You can't reach anybody. You are alone. Your children are gone. Your family is gone. Your wife is gone. The Bible says two, um, two will be sleeping on the bed and one will be taken. I mean, uh, that particular moment of time. But we don't know when it's coming. I mean, uh, it will remain, it will be, a, it will, if it will happen in the morning, it will work, we will work, as, we will work in the morning as any day. Maybe you prepare your children to take them to school. As you're driving to take your children to school. As you're preparing, making up to get into your car to go to work. I mean, uh, as you're picking up your books to go to school, those who are studying. As you still asleep, maybe it's at night. We don't know the day, we don't know the hour. But the day is coming and it's very, very cross. So the Lord is warning us to be ready for this particular day when he will rapture us. Amen. Your beloved ones are gone. Your children are gone. If, let's assume you're a husband. Your children are taken and your wife, you will remain behind. Let's assume you're a pastor like me. The flock is gone. You remain behind as a pastor. What a shame. Wahanji. It will be a very, very hard situation. But now God is calling us to repent, to cleanse our closets, to prepare ourselves, to walk when we are sober, to be vigilant, to know that there is this day. And it's very soon. Any time from now, we can be raptured. So peace will be taken away from the earth. And people will be allowed to kill each other. Because the world will be lawlessness. There will be lawlessness. There won't be any law. People will do as it, it pleases from their hearts. They will kill each other. They will rob themselves. They will murder. I mean, uh, you would not you would, you would need to be here. So, Mukama Kugamba Mwana Wakatunda, we call him Momori Motambrengo Chimani. We've been having Charles, Charles and Chalene. Uh, if you bring it back, if you remind, you rewind the tape behind three weeks ago, before Chalene and Charles got married. If you met Charles and asked him what was on his mind three weeks ago, he'll tell you, um, all I'm thinking about is my wedding. If you ask Chalene, Chalene would tell you, all I'm thinking about is my wedding. Now, just like Charles and Charlene, in the same way, we, that's the same way we need to think about this day. Amen? We need to walk knowing very well that any time we can be raptured, any time we can be taken, we need to walk when we are prepared. Now, even before the rapture, even before the rapture, any time we can die, you don't know when you die, the day you'll die. As I've been coming along in the, and, and, and in the valley there where they are, while we were there in Motokawa, I found a guy, uh, he's lying dead, the taxi hit him, a boda boda guy. And it's like, oh God, had he given his life to you? I don't know. I mean, uh, so members, sons of God, we really need to be sober. We need to walk. God is calling us to walk when we are very much sober, knowing well that the day is coming. Number two, the children of the godly people will be missing. Your family will be missing. I can see how you're calling that baby Charlie. Uh, I mean, uh, Mrs. Zinini. But now just imagine you wake up and she's gone. She derailing or cigarette demonyumba no muami. Muge kuba komuno no one at Mulaba Mulabangwe. I mean, uh, switching on the TV. You are seeing a global catastrophe. People are crying, running to the police, Amina, and the police are also disturbed. Amen. Such a scenario. They are disturbed. The police people are crying. The army people are crying. Hallelujah. Your children are gone. Your beloved ones are gone. You are remaining alone. And the fact that you will see this event, 
by your naked eye, it will scare us more. Graves are open. Maybe they buried someone here. Open, and the person is gone. Amen? Number three, there will be very few caring people. This is what I call a survival mode. We will, people, will, people will come into a, a moment called a survival mode. You're trying to survive. You can hardly go out. Because as you're trying to open the door out of your, to, go, to get out of your house, imagine as you open the door amen you go back there is survival they are breaking up your gate to come and take your car. You can't hardly do nothing. Such a, such a, such a, more, a scenario, a survival mode. mode. There will be a lot of shortage of water. Clean water, no more. No internet. I mean, uh, no network. You're trying to reach out to people. You can't hardly see anyone. I mean, uh, maybe it's a web one, but can't see the name. Kubira koko wawa. Kudoro we kazo. I mean, uh, simu kutuka kutuka. Musumba ne wasiga de. Kati tu sisi inkane kare tu getwe kule mo 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 tu sabene. Engo crossinga from one to coming to kazo. My dear, wakatiao. There are a lot of blood blocks. You can hardly move. So now imagine as you're moving around the, an entire. Village is infested with dead bodies. Dogs are eating. I mean, uh, I'm sorry if you are here and you are coming from Rwanda, but if you know what happened in Rwanda in 1994, that scenario, these are the very things that are going to happen. I mean, uh, you wouldn't love to stay son of God. So be so diligent. Cleanse your closet. Repent. The Bible is calling us to repentance. You, if you have to, remake, to renew your voice with the Lord, you better do today. I mean, uh, you better leave that sin, that habitual sin. Number four, you won't be able to buy, neither to sell, because after this chaos, the world will come out like they will bring rent, they will like, like to bring out peace. Then the man of perdition will come. One government, that, what, that's what we call the new world order. One government, one currency, and one army. I mean, Muchisere, Chubakore, Jerry Mu, a Jerry Olimuli Tandiko Kuja, Likorechi, Litandiko Fugensi. Now the man of perdition, the man of sin, the Bible talks about, will surface, will appear as a leader. And he will enforce. The number of the beast. The man himself is a beast. The Bible is called the beast. He will come and will enforce this number 666. Number 666 is where God is omitted, where there is no God. I mean, uh, I wouldn't love to go into that. But, and whoever will receive that number will never be saved. That's what the Bible says. You will never be saved. Now, those who will be saved in that particular moment, they are Babajoku Kirizokufa. And I could walk Christo Kalem, Omosai go good Jacuro Corano Mobirigo. I mean, uh, Nayeto Jacu, Nayo Castomala of Fune number, because I've been telling people in the morning that when we receive Christ, we receive a mark. That's in Ephesians 1 13. We receive a mark. The Spirit marks us. I mean, that on Wangi. Now, even the devil, the man of sin will come out and mark his own. But now, embere Jacobans, the Bunyo, Tocha Sola Kuria, Tocha Sola reaching a medication, or in Osuga Dovano, or Nevu Magara, or Laba, or Fatocha Sola Funa, you'll just give up to Ganlis or Bakuteke and Nambog and Ofune Dagar, Ofune Mary, Ofune Transport, or Gosoboro Kugura. But the truth is, after receiving that marker, forget about salvation. Why would you love to reach to that extent when grace is still here? I mean, uh, when the rapture is today, you can be raptured today and receive the Lord. Amen? So, so God is calling us to repent, to come into repentance, for the day of the Lord is here. We are in the seventh day. 
we are in the last cry of grace. Grace is crying. This is the last voice. That's why you realize the gospel is preached almost in every corner. But those Amen. Everywhere, God is raising people to preach the gospel. God is putting a zeal into the hearts of men to preach the gospel. God is giving boldness to people to stand to preach the gospel. And I'm telling you, some of you, God is giving you the grace and boldness. Because I mean, uh, so I want us to stand up at this very particular moment. Amen. I want you to go before the Lord and repent. The Bible says, repent and come back to me. Zabu. So, if you are to renew your vows with the Lord, they're receiving a salvation right now. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice and pray to God and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word comes for a season, for, for, for a purpose, and in the right season. Your word is always timely, King of glory. You brought this word unto us, Lord. You want us to prepare ourselves. You want us to walk knowing, being sober and diligent, knowing well that your day, the day, your, the day of the Lord is here. You are coming to rapture the church. You are coming to represent the church without wrinkle and spot. Father, Lord, I pray, if we've been having wrinkles, if we've been having, we've been having spots on our remnants, Lord, we wash in your precious blood. May you cleanse us, Lord. Give us the grace to leave that sin, Lord. That sacred sin. That sacred sin that is eating up that man. That sacred sin that is eating up that young man. That young woman, Lord. Give them the grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace, Father. That we will walk when we are pure. When we are holy before you. That when you come to rapture us, when you come to present us, a church that is holy without a wrinkle, without a spot, that will be worthy of you. Let our meditations be acceptable before you. Let the words that we speak be acceptable before you. The friends that we have, may you take the love of the world out of us, Lord. May you take the, the, the pride of life out of us, the lusts of the eyes, the lusts of the flesh that will incline on your word, that will walk into you, that will be in you and you in us, will be holy without a brain before you. For when you come to rapture us, Lord, we shall say and cry that, come, O oh Lord, come and take your church. Come the bride and take your groom. In the name of, come the groom and take the bride. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we, are, we, are, we pray that you cleanse us. You wash, we soak our clothes into your blood. We become holy. We choose to be holy as you are holy. We choose to walk righteous before you in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that let not the devil steal away this awareness. Let this awareness stay in our hearts. In as we are doing our daily endeavors, as we are doing our daily routines, Lord, we go, we, we, we move knowing very well that the church, you're coming to rapture us. You're coming to take us. For Peter has warned us and showed us that this, the day is here. The day is near. We've already reached the day of completion. Walking in the times where you're completing everything. Father Lord, we bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And God's people said, Amen, Amen. Now give a mighty hand bless unto the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' mighty name.